Hi, boys and girls. It's great to be with you again. I'm Pastor Denny. And I'm Pastor D. And we're going to start by singing a song again. And it's called Can Do It. You'll have a lot of fun with this song. Okay. Are you here. ready? I think I'm ready, Pastor okay. Denny. So let's get going here, all right? Here we go. Um. To me, I can do all things through Jesus Christ. I can do all things through Jesus Christ. Sing, sing to me, I can do all things through Jesus Christ. Can you do like this? Can you do like this? Can you do it? 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 Can you Sing to me, I can do all things through Jesus Christ. I can do all things through Jesus Christ. Sing strength to me, I can do all things through Jesus Christ. Here we go. Can you do it? Can you do it? strengthens me. Not only me, but that's you too, as you believe and as you trust in Jesus. You know, we're going to have a scripture now that talks about how we need to work for the Lord, and when we work for the Lord, how we should work for the Lord. Now, Pastor D is going to go over the whiteboard and share Ecclesiastes 9.10 with us. Let's see what she has to say. Okay, today we're going to be looking at our scripture, which is found in Ecclesiastes 9.10, and this is in the Old Testament. If you go back to Ecclesiastes, you're going to find that it was written by Solomon, and he also wrote Proverbs, and so, uh, and so this is part of wise sayings that he has for us to learn, okay? So it says, whatever... Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all of your might. Ecclesiastes 9.10. Well, that's a fairly easy scripture, so let's take a look at it. Whatever your hand finds to do. Well, we can do a lot of things with our hands. We can play the piano, guitar, we can play instruments, we can bake and cook. We can help our dad um, mow the lawn. We can do mechanical work and carpentry. We can work many, many ways. We can write. We can do many, many things with our hands. But it's not just talking about our hands here. I think it's probably also talking about our heads, if we're thinking, if we're writing, whatever we're doing. So whatever our hands find to do, do it with all all of 
our might. Ecclesiastes 9.10. Now, we might look at this word, might, do it with all of your might. That kind of makes us think of our strength, doesn't it? But it's not just strength. It's our heart. It's our mind. It's our soul. And it's our strength. So, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all of your might. Ecclesiastes 9.10. There's a scripture in the New Testament that kind of goes along with this. And it says, uh, whatever you do, do it heartily, with all your heart, as unto the Lord and not as unto men. All right? So we're doing whatever we do. We're doing it to please the Lord. Isn't that true? It is. Let's say it one more time together. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all of your might. Ecclesiastes 9.10. It's a great scripture to memorize. And now we're going on to the book of books and our puppet skit. Good night, son. And again. Son, didn't I tell you to clean your room today? I did clean my room. Well, then why are there grape seeds on the floor? Because I was eating grapes while I was cleaning. I'm looking at these dirty clothes on your bed. Uh, I'll wash it tomorrow. And that's a muddy blanket on your window. That's from when we went fishing. Last week? I put my toys away. That's only part of what I asked you to do. I'll be cleaning up later. Seth, it's time for you to start being responsible for yourself. There's joy in finishing a job and knowing you've done your best. I do do my best. No, son. This is not your best. Oh, work is hard, and sometimes I don't feel like doing my best. We do a good job because it's the right thing to do. Not because it feels good at the time. Why, what if our great ancestors had had your attitude? Hmm. Moses wouldn't have led the children of Israel out of the wilderness. Joshua, he wouldn't have won that great battle at Jericho. And Noah, what kind of ark do you think he would have been? What kind of ark? Boys, outside! Out! Your father's trying to build the ark according to the word of God. Ay. Forgive them, Noah. They're too young to understand the magnitude of the job set before you. Coffee? Oh, it's no use. I'm never going to be able to build this. It's too hard. What are you talking? You're just discouraged. God's own voice told you to build an ark. No, no, you see, I'm wondering if it really was God's voice. Of course it was God's voice. No, no, listen. What if it was some sort of huge practical joke? It could have been the children. You said it was a deep voice. A booming voice. How would the boys sound like that? Um, maybe they were in a cave. Noah! Okay, okay, you're right, you're right. It was God. God's voice told me to build an ark. What are you gonna do, are you? Well, it's just a... Look at all these details. Look at this. Okay, here are the plans I drew up according to God's directions. This is how large I'm supposed to build this ark. Oh, that's large. Very large. Why should it be so large? That's what I'm saying. I don't want anything that large in the front yard. It'll block the view from the house. Well, I was planning on building it in the back. So, how many will be on board? Well, us, the boys, their wives. Animals? <sighs> A lot of animals. A lot of animals. Wouldn't it be easier to leave some of the animals behind and just build a smaller ark? Leave some of the animals behind? Hmm. Well, uh, it would be easy to leave the skunk. Who's to argue? Leave the skunk. Elephants take up a lot of space. <sighs> Elephants are history. Fewer animals, less food to store, smaller ark. <laughs> I wonder what other areas of this plane we could simplify. No one went to work building the ark. The Lord had 
constructed a new cypress wood, and he did, until he discovered how hard it was, so he switched to using balsa wood. As Noah's sons grew, they began to see ways to make the job easier, too. Shem suggested coating only one side of the wood with tar instead of both sides, like God had instructed. The original plan called for small windows at the top of the ark, but Pam thought small peoples would be easier. Finally, one day it started to rain, and Noah and his family got in the ark. We need another bucket over here! What are we gonna do with all this water when the buckets fill up the... Uh, throw it out a window? The original plan had windows, but we built peepholes instead! Oh, I, uh... We've gotta find a saw and cut a window so we can throw all this water out! <laughs> Sir! Sir! What? 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 Where is the girl camel? How should I know? I brought the boy camel! specifications and didn't make changes? Why am I? Because otherwise we probably wouldn't be here today. Well, when God gives you something to do, you need to do it with all your might. And what God is saying in this in this uh, word with this verse is that he's saying whatever your hands find to do. That means that not just what God gives you to do, but as you have an employer or your mom and dad give you a, a job to do, or to do it with all your might, you sort of to put yourself totally into it and do a good job. Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. And when you get older and you, you get a job, that's what happens. You're a worker and you work for a boss, and workers are supposed to be rewarded for the job that they do. And God ordained that that if it's done right for the worker to receive a paycheck. Now, a paycheck is, is, uh, indicates that you have done the job and you finished the job and you received your reward. Now, there's financial rewards that you get when you have, have a paycheck, and that's there. There's material rewards, which we could say might be this here. You know, all material rewards. And, and you get those, those are the types of rewards that you get when you've done a good job. And there's also monetary rewards. Here, these are, oh, yeah, gotta get them all in here. <laughs> yeah. And you see, financial rewards, material rewards, are kind of locked away. They're locked away. That means that they're, they're locked away until you performed to the degree you are deserving of those rewards. You know, money doesn't just lay around waiting for people to grab it and pick it up. We have to know the secret of getting money the right way, getting those rewards the right way. Now, many people go after money the wrong way. 
And we're going to take a look at two different kinds of jobs today. One is one that all of you boys and girls, I'm sure, have an opportunity to, to uh, uh, receive a reward for doing, and that's cleaning your room. That's a job, cleaning your room. Also, you may mow the neighbor's lawn and receive a reward, cash or even uh, uh, a material reward of some kind. Of some kind. Maybe the, you're going to mow someone's lawn and they're going to take you to the Dairy Queen or take you to a rip your stand. Okay? So clean your, clean your room and mow your lawn. Clean your room, you know you've got a toy box, you got laundry, you got a sweep, you got a dust, you got to straighten the desk, lots of things to do to clean your room. Mowing your lawn, you have to make sure that you get all the grass cut and at the right height. And so, and when you complete your job, you nonetheless you would have a reward waiting for you. Now, there's different ways that you can work toward that reward. And uh, some, one of them is to do it quickly. Do it quickly. That means that it's fast, okay? So that means that, okay, I gotta do my, I gotta clean my bedroom, I, but I wanna go outside and play, so I, I just, I've gotta get this done quickly. And so you take everything and you shove it, you lift up your bedspread and you shove it all the toys, instead of putting them in the box and into your closet, you shove them all underneath the bed. You take your dirty clothes and you shove them underneath the bed. And uh, you, you, uh, uh, straighten out your desk, you just pile up everything in a pile. You don't go through it, you just pile it up. And then you're all done and you're, you're ready to go, uh, go out and play. Mom comes in and says, well, wait a minute, let's see what you did. And we're going to see here what happens. I've got on the back here for a, a quick job, I've got a, a, a number here it's a combination for, for a lock. And we're going to see if it opens it. So you do the job quickly. And the number is 182068. 182068. Are you ready for your reward? That doesn't open the lock. So doing it quickly is not always going to get you a reward. Well, we've got to find out what's another way. Oh, we can do it poorly. Poorly. Now, how would you do it poorly? Well, say you had some clothes that mom had washed and she, uh, and then uh, you brought them up to your room and you were going to, supposed to put those clothes away and you just set them in the, in the closet. You didn't want to take the time to put them in the, in, into the drawers. Or to do it poorly, Maybe you had some dirty clothes there, but you knew, knew you got to get them off the floor. And so what did you do? You stuffed them in the drawer with the clean clothes. Ooh wee, I don't think I want to do that. So that would be doing the work poorly. Or you're sweeping the floor and you don't, you forgot the dustpan. Oh my, I forgot the dustpan. So I'm just going to look one way, look the other way, and underneath the Chester drawers, you sweep the dirt. Yeah, that's doing it poorly. Say you're you're uh, uh, mowing the lawn, and you're, you're trying to get done as fast as you can, and you're going along, and you, you're, you're not overlapping. You're not overlapping. Those of you that have mowed lawns before know exactly what I mean. You overlap where you cut the last time, just a little bit, so that you make sure you get all the grass. But you don't. And then sometimes, if you don't do that, you get strips that are higher than the other that's been cut. Okay? So, I got a number here too. I did the job poorly and it's 23, 15, 30. 23, 15, 30. Nah, I'm sorry. If you do it poorly, you're not going to receive the reward. Well, let's see. Can we have another one here? Oh, here it is. Do it the easy way. Do it the easy way. Well, that means you probably don't want to work too long. You don't want to work too hard. You don't want to do too anything extra. Say you got the laundry. 
and you put it in a bag anyway, but you know it's supposed to go down into the laundry room so that mom can wash it. But you don't want to go downstairs, so you just take the bag and you throw it in the closet and you shut the closet door. It's kind of doing it the easy way. You know, you did half a job, you got it picked up off the floor at least. You know. And when you're mowing your lawn, you set it, you set the it up high. And that way you can zoom through it. You can do it the easy way. Well, the easy way is combination is 15, 5, 25. 15, 5, 25. Nope, it doesn't open. No reward for you if you're just, just going to do it the easy way. Okay, now, we must do it the right way. We must do it the right way if we're going to receive a reward. And sometimes the right way, it takes longer to do the job right. To take the laundry down to the laundry room, to do a little bit extra, stack your toys in the, in the, uh, in the toy box so you can get them all in there nicely, and sweep your floor out and use the dustpan doing it the right way. And when, when you're mowing the lawn, that you put it at the proper height and you overlap and you, and you don't go too fast. But you do it a good job and you do it the right way. But doing a job the right way, let's see what happens. I've got another combination. If I do the job the right way, 36, 10, 24. Thirty-six. Then we got to go by the ten the first time and stop it up the second time. Ten. Twenty-four. Ah, there we go. And we get our reward. Why? Because we did it the right way. And only, that's the only way to get a lasting reward from God or to be rewarded in doing a job for a neighbor or your mom and dad. You want to do it the right way. And you want to do it with all your might. That means you, you put yourself into it totally. You, do extra, uh, you go the extra mile, as one might say. You do some things that they maybe didn't ask you to do, but you knew it was the right thing to do and would even make the job better after you performed it. Okay, so I hope that this, this week, that when you have those tasks that mom and dad ask you to do, or maybe a neighbor, that you'll do it the right way. You'll mow the lawn the right way. You'll uh, clean your room the right way. You'll straighten things up in the house the right way. And you'll I guarantee it that you'll be rewarded for it. You'll be blessed. So let's do that. As we look at the scripture again, Ecclesiastes 10, 9, 10, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. All your might. So go out this week and be obedient to the word of God. And remember, Jesus said that if you have a job, do it as unto the Lord. That means every job you have, whether it's your mom or dad or a neighbor or someone else gives it to you, perform it as if you're doing it for Jesus himself. Wouldn't you do a good job if, you, if Jesus asked you? Well, he's asking you today to do a good job. So have a great week. Hopefully your reward is awaiting you as you do your jobs this week. God bless you and we'll see you next week.